Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to be solving the lead code question, check array formation through concatenation. All right, so in this question, we're given an array of distinct integers r and an array of integers er, integer array pieces, where the integers in pieces are distinct. So this is pretty important, the fact that they are distinct values. Your goal is to form r by concatenating the array in pieces in any order. However, you are not allowed to reorder the integers in each array of pieces either. So we cannot change a single piece, okay, or the order of the numbers inside of a piece. So return true if it is possible to form the array R from pieces or else return false. Okay, so let's just look at a few examples to better understand what the question is asking for. So in example one, it's pretty simple. Uh, we have the pieces that we have, we just have one piece and the piece over here has the value 85. So the area that we want to construct at the end of this is using whatever pieces we have here, right? So in this case, they're just one. We want to construct whatever array is equal to. So in this case, we want to construct an array with just a value 85, and it has to be in the same order. So in this case, it's pretty simple. We just take 85, append it, and we're done, okay? So we end up returning true. It is possible. So let's look at another, uh, other example. So we have 15 and 88, and the pieces, we actually have two pieces now. So we have 88 and 15. So one thing you want to notice is that they're not in the same order and that actually does not matter. So the pieces itself do not have to be in the same order. So let's just assume we have an empty uh, array or list, right? And to this empty array, we're going to first add the number 15. Then we're going to add the number 18 and that's going to give us 15 comma 18, which is exactly what we're looking for. So we end up returning true. Okay, so pretty simple and that's all we really have to do. So the order pieces is, the each piece is in doesn't matter. But what does matter is uh, something that comes over here. So we have 14, uh, sorry, 49, 18, and 16. Now in pieces, we just have one piece, okay? This entire thing is one thing, okay? You wanna notice that. So in the entire piece, we have the numbers 49, we have the numbers 18 and 16. But inside of a certain piece, you cannot change the order. So the piece itself is always going to be 16, 18, 49 as a whole. And you just cannot take parts of it either. You have to take the entire piece. So in this case, let's say we take 16, 18, 49. We are not going to have the same value as this. Even though the numbers itself are the same, they're not in the same order. So we end up returning false. Okay, and finally, we're just gonna look at one last example over here, which is this one over here. And over here, let's try to actually come up with a solution while going through this uh, example. So in this example, uh, we have to, the end goal is to construct this error. So we'll be doing the same thing, trying to reconstruct it. So we're going to start off with an empty list. So let's have an empty list in the beginning. And what we want to do is we want to reconstruct this, right? So we have 91, 4, 64, 78. So we're going to be, uh, so the first number we want is 91. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if 91 exists inside of pieces. So we have 78, we have 4, 64, and 91. So in this case, 91 does exist by itself, so we're gonna add that over to our list. Now, there's one more thing I do want to kind of point out. So in this case, while we were going through the numbers, we were checking each and every single one. We looked at 78, then we looked at 4, 64, and 91. But really, we should only be looking at whatever is at its zeroth index. Now, why is this important? So the reason for this is because 91 has to be in the beginning, right? So 91 has to be the first number and we cannot change the order of the numbers inside of a certain piece. So that means that whatever pieces we have over here, 91 has to be at the zeroth index. So in this case over here, 91 is at the zeroth index, so we add that to our results array. So now our results array has the value 91, okay, perfect. So now we have the number four. Now again, we're gonna do the same thing and we found four over here. Now when we're adding four to our result, we have to add the entire piece as it is. So to do that, we're going to add 4, 64. So now our array has the values 91, 4, 64. So that's our entire area so far. So do keep in mind, you're adding the entire piece. And since you're adding the entire piece, so let's say over here we had a number 30, but the number we really want is 64. So in that case, we would actually end up returning false since we cannot construct our area. And this is where this observation comes into play, that the numbers are distinct, okay? So that actually helps us because uh, that means, so in this case, we have 4, 64. That means that we're never going to have another piece with the number 4. So it makes it a lot easier for us to search through the numbers. 
Okay, fine. So now we have 91,464 in our area. And finally, for 78, it's by itself over here. So we're going to add it and we found our complete area. So as you can kind of tell, we're kind of looking for if the... So, so basic, the basic idea over here real quickly is that we're going to a number in area and we're checking if it exists at the zeroth index for any of the pieces. And if it does exist at the zeroth index, then we add the entire, um, sorry, a piece to our new area. So as you can kind of tell, we're looking for a certain value, which is whatever is at the zeroth index, and we're adding its entire piece. So keeping that in mind, we can kind of use a dictionary or a hash map to implement this. So let's see how we can do that real quickly. Okay, so let's start off by forming a dictionary over here. So we're gonna start off with an empty dictionary and what exactly we're gonna add over here. So like I said, the key or what we're looking up for is going to be a certain number. And to be more precise, it's gonna be whatever is at the zeroth index for each of the pieces because that's what we're looking for. And this also actually speeds up the process by quite a bit because the lookup time for a dictionary over here is just going to be big O of one. So it happens in constant time. So to do this, we can do it instead of a for loop. So actually, I'll just do that. So let's just do for piece in pieces. So now we get each of the piece and what is going to be the key. So the key is just going to be whatever is at the zero index. So piece zero and the value for this is going to be the entire piece because that's what we want to append back to our result uh, list. So you could do this and you're going to form uh, your array, the dictionary by itself, or you could do this using comprehension, which looks a lot better. So let's just do, so what is the key going to be? So the key over here is going to be zero. And to use comprehension, um, so it, the values itself are going to change. And to do that, we're going to get P's, four P's, and, and we're going to get each of the pieces instead of pieces, okay? So let's just do this. So basically all we're doing is for piece and pieces, that's what we're doing over here. We're getting each of the piece and uh, we're adding the zeroth index, whatever values are the zeroth index as the key and the rest of it is going to be the piece itself, okay? So they're both the same thing. All right, perfect. So now we have our dictionary formed and now our next step is to actually end up forming this uh, original area that we have. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to have a results array and we're ju we'll just call it res and we want to build it up to be equal to this exact same thing. And if it is equal to it, we return true. So how do we do that? So real quickly, let's just put it inside of for loop. So for, and we're going to be getting each of the elements inside of our array. So to do that, let's just do for x in array. So now we get each of the elements inside of the array. Now, once we get each of these elements, we want to check if this element over here already exists inside of our dictionary. So in other words, is it at the zeroth index of any of the pieces? So to do that, all we got to do is we're going to check if x in t. So if that does exist and if the x value is inside our dictionary, then in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to go to it, get its value. So let's just do that. So we go to our dictionary and we're going to go to x and over here, we're going to get its value. And once we get its value, we're going to append its value to our result. So res.append, and then we're going to append this. So uh, okay, so you actually don't want to append them because let's say you have a list over here and you actually want to end up appending one comma two. So when you append it, you append the entire list itself. So you end up with this. But instead, what we want is we only want the values. So we just want one and two. So to do that, you could use the get function from the dictionary itself. Or another thing that you could do is you could use uh, extend. So you could use res dot extend okay and that should be it so at the very ending what we uh, have to do is we're going to end up returning i'm sorry so we're going to return and what are we going to do is we're going to do res equal to area so if uh, the result is the same as our area then this over here is going to have a value of true so we end up returning true and if that's not the case we end up returning false pretty simple let's submit it and it should get accepted so finally Thanks a lot for watching guys and do let me know if you have any questions and happy new years to everyone. Thank you.